first would like to thank again the, the people from Meineke Car Care Bowl. Uh, they've been awesome to our guys all week long. Uh, really, really appreciate the, the hospitality. Uh, this has been a tough month for Texas A&M, uh, for Texas A&M football. Um, with us losing Coach Sherman uh, and, and having our staff rally like they did what was extremely impressive to me. Uh, we've got a bunch of really, really professional guys in our coaching staff that are excellent people as well as coaches. Um, and then the tragedy that we had last week with, with, with losing Joey. Uh, I didn't know if our guys would, would be able to handle it. Uh, but Coach Sherman talked to these guys all the time about life lessons of, of character and integrity, uh, how to persevere through, through tough times, and, and obviously they bought in. Uh, a little bit too much so. In fact, we wanted to create a little bit more adversity for ourselves in the second half uh, after that third quarter was pretty good. In the fourth quarter, we uh, uh, slipped up a little bit and, and, and let them go down the field. But uh, I can't say enough about the effort of our guys, uh, the, the integrity that they have to, to come out and fight against a, an outstanding Northwestern team, uh, a team that we knew had no quit in them. Uh, uh, we got up and, and knew that they were not going to, you know, lay down. And, and Coach Fitzgerald and his his staff uh, do an excellent job with those guys. When you're playing against a, a senior quarter, quarterback like Dan Persa, uh, they're always in a game. I thought they, they made some tremendous plays. But that final drive that our offense did really made the difference in the game. Uh, we had some third and longs that uh, I think Coach Rossley called uh, a double circus and. and uh, Easy makes a great catch on the sideline. Ryan makes a heck of a throw. We get it all protected, and then we get another third and long, and Jeff makes a big play. That was just huge in order to go down the field and take a little bit of the pressure off the defense because the momentum was going the other way. Uh, to get that done, just uh, I, I can't describe the emotion. And uh, again, how pr happy and how proud I am of these guys. Uh, they will always be in my heart, and, and hopefully we, uh, we were able to give some comfort to Joey V's family. There's a little button on the bottom of it. Sorry, Gabe. Come on, Gabe. <laughs> Just for the two seniors. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Hey, for the two seniors, Ryan Tannehill and T. Fred, what does it mean to you guys to, to close out your career by snapping the bowl drop? I mean, it definitely was big for us. I mean, we, we've come a long way. The, my class and Coach Sherman bringing most of us in. And, I mean, to end with a win, it meant a lot to us and to end him. It's been a long year, a lot of ups and downs, um, but it was great to go out with a win for a lot of different reasons. Um, go out with my, my brothers one last time and get a win, um, get a bowl, game, bowl win for the first time in 10 years, play for Joey V, most importantly, um, and his family, and that tragic loss. Coach Sherman, um, you know, there's, there's many different levels to it, but um, you know, a win satisfies them all, and you know, it's, it's just so special to be on the field with my, my teammates and I'll compete one last time. Back on the right. For Coach and Ryan, um, at the end, hooking arms, sawing them off with all the guys. After, after a tough season, how good was that feeling to finish the way you, you did? Uh, it's huge. You know, like I said, there's so many different levels to it. Um, you know, it's that feeling when, when uh, we kicked the field goal, knew, knew it was pretty much in hand. Um, just that feeling of joy that, that was on the sideline, guys hugging each other. Um, you know, that's what you play for, those, those good times on the sideline, in the locker room, um, with your best friends, um, after a big, big win against a good Northwestern team. Um, take nothing away from those guys. They fought hard the entire game, um, pulled out a little bit of a lead, and then they, they fought right back. And we knew we were going to get that from them, a well-coached team that, that had no quit in them. So um, it means a lot to, to this team. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be over there sawing them off. I had to do uh, some other things. But, um, you know, just to, just to be with my teammates one last time is huge. Coming here two years ago and knowing how special A&M is and the tr traditions we have here with winning uh, and being able to be a part of that uh, will always be a part of me. And so to, to have my final game uh, to be able to go through and solve Arcee's horns off it was, was extremely special on a, on a selfish uh, scale. But since you asked, I guess uh, I'll, I'll say that. But uh, I, I've got a, a tons of huge memories that, that are great memories of this place. and. Uh, uh, Son Varsity's horns off against these guys, and you know, last year against Texas and Nebraska and, and some other games just will, will be all time highlights in, in, in my life and in my football career. And just want to thank the 12th man for being as special as they are.
Back middle. Uh, for all the players up there, um, I'm wondering, uh, after all the Texas A&M has been through in the past month, I mean, when do you think we'll begin to sink in? I mean, I, there's so much to comprehend. Uh, when do you think we'll start to, you'll start to realize what just happened? You know, uh, I really think these guys, we, we were working hard all week, um, but I think it really sank in just in the locker room. Really, uh, you know, we, we kind of realized, you know, uh, this is the last time to be around each other, the last time to be around these seniors. and. Uh, it's uh, it, it's it's big to, to take this in and, and enjoy it, and um, you know it, it was memories. You know we worked hard this week in practice and we had fun, and you know, I feel like we just came out and played together today. And uh, you know obviously Ryan and T. Fred, uh, who are great le uh, senior leaders on this team, just you know kind of took everyone under their arm and, uh, and and just played well and, and played with leadership. Back, Brent. This is for Ryan Tannehill. Ryan, based on all the expectations of this season. Did today kind of offer uh, an example of what might have been or what could have been for y'all, uh, the way the defense played, the way the offense came together and so forth? Yeah, I think uh, a little bit so. Um, you know, we never wanted to lose sight of who we thought we were, who we are. Um, you know, we, we talked about it throughout the year, and, and Coach Giroux talked about it um, early in the week. Um, I think he talked about it yesterday. Just um, play who play like who we thought we were at the beginning of the year. And we a high-confidence team that, that uh, you know, thought we were going to – you know, playing the, the national championship game. You know, that's who we were. Did things work out that way? No. But um, it's the same guys that are out on the field that, that we thought we were going to do that with. And um, I think we, we started this game with a lot of confidence and played with confidence throughout the game. Um, just in the guys beside us, um, leaning on each other, knowing uh, if I mess up a play, you know, someone else is going to make one. And, um, you know, that's, that's the great thing about, about the guys in that locker room is we're guys that are going to trust each other and make plays for each other. Back left here. It's for either one of the players. How about uh, how about just to get that game clinching drive right there, where in so many games this year you guys had not made you know a couple of plays and the game got away from you. Well, like you said, I mean you've been watching us this whole season. I mean we really haven't been finishing many games the second half, and when it came down to it, our offense came up and they made big plays in in the big time of our game, and that was good for this the team. Back in the middle, Chuck. For Ryan Tannehill, Ryan, could you just talk about that as well? What was going through your mind on that final drive in terms of especially the two third down situations that you faced to extend the drive and knowing, again, the history of this team, what you've gone through in the second halves of some teams and with Northwestern having the momentum? I'm glad. I'm glad we're put in that situation. Um, you know, is it easier to go out with a huge win? Yes, but um, that, was, that was something that haunted us all year. And for the offense to get the ball, I think it was around five minutes left on the clock. We needed a score to put the game away. Um, you know, defense played great all game. Unfortunately, they, they gave us a quick score there. And um, the offense needed to answer. That's what, it, that's what it came down to. And I told the guys on the side, you know, we need to answer to win this game. It's on us. It doesn't matter what the defense did. It doesn't matter what special teams did. The game is right here in our hands right now, and we got to take it. And came down to a couple big third down plays. Um, they did a great job of, of stuffing the run. And, and putting us in some third and medium, um, third and long yardage, and um, guys made plays. You know, that's that's a great thing about, like I said, about our guys is they wanted to make plays today for a lot of reasons, and um, caught the right coverage. Uh, first one to Easy, Easy ran a great route um, and made a good catch and, and stayed in bounds. Um, Jeff uh, underthrew him a little bit, and he made a play, and that was huge for Jeff Fuller. Um, he played great today. He had a great bowl practice, um, really. Uh, the entire month, and uh, we were excited coming to this game to see uh, to see him play, and, and he showed up tonight and played big for us. Okay. Left here, Terrence. Can you talk about the defense? It seemed like since the beginning of the season, the steady improvement. Kind of y'all cap it off today against a explosive Northwestern offense to get eight sacks, uh, shut them down. You know, f for the majority of the game, and really put pressure on them. It seemed like that was a way to cap off the year for y'all. I mean, this whole season we. As a defense, I feel like we've been up and down, and we knew when we don't want to keep doing that consistently uh, week after week. We came out here against Northwestern, and we knew we had to make a lot of plays. We got out, we went out there and made about eight sacks, which we've been doing uh, pretty good in the sacks all year long, and that really helped us in this game and getting the defense off the field and setting the offense up for opportunities to score. Yeah, run the back right. It, uh, Terrence, just along with that question, can you talk about maybe what it was that allowed you guys to get so much pressure uh, on Persa? Uh, just the attitude of getting to the quarterback and, I mean, just to make plays. Like, we, we've slipped up so many times this season and we didn't want to continue that. And, I mean, it was a great call by the coaches and we went out there and executed well. 
Go down here, drum. It's for, for all any one of you players who want to chime in on it. There's always speculation about bowl motivation and which teams will want to play. And you guys had so much turmoil around it that a lot of people expect you to come out and be flat. But you talk about, is it kind of the definition of Aggie pride that you stepped up and played with such emotion, especially early on, and played so well for at least three plus quarters? Yeah, I, th I think so. You know, uh, we had a lot going on this season, a lot of adversity. And uh, like like Ryan said, a lot of bumps in the road. And, um, you know, t to go to this bowl game and, and uh, you know, obviously we lose uh, lose a brother, uh, uh, Joey. Um, but you know, we just came together um, and, and we stayed focused and we, we knew that we had uh, – an opportunity to do good things for this university, uh, and that was to win the bowl game. And uh, I feel like all of our guys just came out and played for Joey uh, and his family. And um, you know, like I said, we played together, and uh, and Coach DeRuiter and all, all the coaching staff just did a great job of preparing us and uh, uh, just you know just focusing on the little things in practice, which uh, you know help, helped us um, you know uh, get, get the W. Over here on the right. Uh, this is for uh, Ryan Tannehill. He touched on a little bit with Jeff Fuller's bowl practice and, and kind of how he came throughout the month. But what was it like seeing a guy like him who the team had adversity, but he kind of struggled with an injury throughout the season to close out his senior year the way he did, both in the Texas game and, and in this game? What was that like to see him out there? Uh, it's huge. Um, you know, battling, battling nag nagging injuries all year is tough. And uh, especially for a, a receiver, a hamstring is, is really tough. Um, but for him to, to come out, the last two games, really, and, and throughout this month, just get better every day, make plays, um, get 100% healthy. And I think that was the big thing is once he got healthy, uh, he was able to trust trust his speed, um, trust his athletic ability, and go make plays. And, you know, he did that tonight. He did that throughout the, the bowl preparation. And, you know, he's a great player. I'm going to miss throwing it to him. Okay, down here on the left in front. Uh, to any of the players up there, third quarter has especially been a tough quarter for you all, uh, all season long, uh, especially in the losses. Did it feel different, and how did you all kind of approach it? How did it feel on the field today? You did have a pretty good one today. Felt great. Um, you know, we were excited to get back on the field. Um, had a lot of things to play for, a lot of motivation. And, you know, the guys really, really banded together and went out there with a, with a mission. And the mission was to win the game. And, um, you know, we played some intensity defense, made some huge plays in the third quarter. Um, that, that gets the sideline going whenever defense is making sacks, uh, big hits. And you know the offense was able to put some points up as well. So I think the defense really set the tone in the third quarter, um, getting, a, getting a quick stop. And then we, offense was able to go down and score. Uh, the defense continued to play well the, the entire quarter. And I think that's what, what keyed us on the, on the third quarter. Okay, a couple more for the student athletes back here on the right. This is for Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Ryan, two years ago, at the beginning of the season, you were a starting wide receiver and a good one. T talk about the change that you had to make and, uh, and how tough that was to move to quarterback and become that leader. Um, it was definitely a change, but some, it was something I looked forward to the entire time. Um, you know, I, I never thought of myself as a wide receiver. I always thought of myself as a quarterback, playing wide receiver. Uh, it was always a goal of mine to be quarterback here. And um, I think the transition was made a lot easier through my teammates. Um, when I came in, my teammates really stepped up around me, started playing well. The offensive line started playing well. Running back, Cyrus, last year, Christian. Uh, receivers really stepped up and made big plays. And um, I think that's what made the transition easier is, is the teammates around me, the coaching staff that prepared me. And um, you know, I'm lucky to have those guys around me. The last one for the student athletes in the back. For Ryan Tannehill, how did the play calling go? Um, Coach Garuder mentioned Coach Rossley a while ago, but it was it Coach Turner who was calling the plays, or did they work together? And were there ever any moments where you're like, oh, boy, or anything along those lines? No, I don't think it was any oh, boy moments. Uh, I think Coach Turner did a great job of calling the majority of the game. I think Coach Rossi handled the third downs, um, which is that's that's been especially all year is, is to focus on third down and converting third down. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of change in the play calling or anything there. Um, Coach Turner did a great job of mixing in the running pass. Um, really called a great game, I think. Uh, kept us moving. Um, called the called the right big play at the right time, and uh, we were able to make them pay. Bye, Christy. Um, you talked earlier about how you kind of weren't sure how the team would respond after all the problems y'all had. Can you can you tell me when you knew that they were going to be okay? Probably about halfway through the first quarter. <laughs> um, you know, when, when you go through the adversity that our guys have been through and just the, the emotions, even around the hotel this week, as much fun as our guys had, there was, you know, I think someone described it as like an Irish wake. Uh, there was just kind of a 
just a sense of it, things weren't quite right. And so when you have that before the game, uh, you, as a coach, you're, you're, you're a little bit unsettled. And so when, when we came out and, and started fast, uh, about that first quarter, I thought these guys are really ready to play. I knew our coaches had done a great job preparing them, but it's that you get into bowl games and it's, it's that motivational factor of are they distracted, are they, uh, are they into it, and our guys today were really into it. Okay, I'm going to the back right on the wall. Coach, next season there's going to be a lot of changes for the guys that are returning. How much do you think they learned from this entire experience, and do you think it's going to make them better heading into next season? Well, we talked all the time about, you know, football teaches life lessons, and uh, they're going to leave and go on to have productive lives, and you may have a, a job that you think you do a great job, and your boss disagrees and he fires you. Um, you know, you got to be able to pick yourself up, you know. People have expectations of you and, you, and you fall short, and, and you got to come back and pick yourself up, and dust yourself off, and, and uh, you know press on. Uh, it would have been easy for our guys today to say, you know what, this was a lost season. Let's just mail it in, and they didn't. And so I think going through that, um, going through that adversity and, and overcoming, even within the game, you know, we get a 30 to seven lead. Uh, we turn the ball over. We don't do a good job getting a sudden change stop. You know, we, we let them convert on a fourth down and go down the field. You know, a lot of times this year, that was our MO of, of not finishing. And, and when adversity hit, not responding to it. And the fact that our guys did, I think, gives you confidence, you know, the next time you hit those things. So absolutely, uh, you know, I was, I was proud of how our guys uh, did today. And I think they can take that momentum into next week, next year. We're on the left, Coach. Coach, during this long preparation period, what are some things defensively that you really harped to your guys and that you saw them really execute on today? Um, I, I just think our guys played with pretty good intensity today. You know, we, we had a uh, similar game plan that we'd run in other games. Uh, you know, having played in, in this league against similar type offenses, uh, I think helped us, you know, so we could play fast. Um, but, but we played an excellent group of, of athletes who were very, very well coached. They gave us some wrinkles that uh, early on we had to adjust to that we you know, hadn't seen. Um, but I just think it was, it was the guys coming out and de deciding that, hey, we're going to play well for, for a multitude of reasons. And uh, I was just really, really happy that uh, they came out that, with that motivation and, and, and showed people who they really were. Okay. Midway on your right here. Coach, uh, how tough was it for you in your first couple of weeks of being a head coach to lead a team through a coaching transition, a tragedy, and all the while searching for a new job? Uh, it was it was different. Um, you know, I, I laughed with uh, Mr. Byrne about you know, you told me you know being the interim head coach be on the job training, and I, I think I got a lot of it uh, this last month. But uh, uh, really relished the opportunity to be the, the interim head coach here. Um, you know, to finish what, what Coach Sherman had started, uh, to be here for these guys who I, I've got tremendous respect for, all these, you know, guys on our team, and you, you saw an example of it today, are high character guys. Um, you know, getting a chance to, to, to go through this was, was big for me personally, but, but more so for, you know, to, to be here and do the right thing for these guys. On the left over here, Coach. Coach, except for maybe the three drop passes in that one stretch. It looked like Tannehill was on as, as much as he's been. How, how important was it to, for him to have a first half start like that as, as far as you're able to respond and get that run of points going? It's huge. Um, you, you, you worry about in a bowl game when you haven't played for about six weeks. Uh, you know, how are guys, the timing, how are, how are things going to be set, and, you know, uh, especially offensively. But to, to have him throw the ball as well as he did, and for the most part, our guys really caught the ball well. Uh, got us going and kept that confidence up. I thought we started the game off with a lot of confidence, but if you, you know, we had that stretch where you dropped those balls, you can just kind of feel it go down a little bit, but uh, we didn't do that to start the game, and, and we knocked ourselves back on track after, after that one series, and it was great to see Ryan do that. I, I'm absolutely not, not surprised. He had great preparation, um, and so it just all showed up today at game day. Then on the right, Gabe. Coach, what did it mean when Jeff Fuller made that catch from jump ball to ice the game, really? And then, especially for him specifically, with everything he's kind of gone through this year? Well, I'll tell you, you know, Jeff, Jeff's had a tough year. You know, a lot of it, people don't realize, you know, the injury factor that was involved. Um, he really 
prepared hard this the last few weeks for, for, for this bowl. Uh, I think he finally got to the point where he's feeling good about himself. And, you know, when you're challenged like that in a third and long situation and it's not an easy throw and catch, you got to go battle for it. When you, when you come out on top of those situations, uh, it just feels that much better. And, and, and as a coach, to see a young man do that, uh, I was really, really pleased for him. And, and hopefully that'll keep him inspired as he goes on to that next step that, that he'll continue to make those kind of plays. Brent in the back. Coach, at what, at what point did you know that Cyrus Gray wasn't going to be able to play? And with Christian already out, how big was Ben Molina today? Uh, well, you know, Cyrus was going to go through warm-ups and see how he felt. And, and uh, uh, going through there, he just he didn't feel right. So we knew coming back in the locker room that it, it wasn't going to be. Uh, but we had, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of confidence in Ben. Uh, I was really impressed the way he stepped up against Texas in our last game. And I, I think Ben was looking forward to being the bell cow and uh, really stepped up today and, and, and got it done. So, uh, you know, talking to Coach Jordan and Coach Turner, they said, hey, if, if, if Cyrus can't go, we're not changing the game plan. This guy will carry the rock and get it done, and, and he did tonight. Uh, Coach, you, you mentioned the defensive game plan. How important was it today to get to person, put pressure on the offensive line? Well, I, I think, you know, he's a guy that, that if you give him time, uh, he's already going to extend play. So if you're, if you're only rushing three or four all the time, uh, he's going to extend plays and guys are going to get open. They've, they've been running this system. I think they led the Big Ten in passing this year. We knew we had to, to change some looks up on him. Um, the fact that our guys, uh, you know, beat some blocks and, and, and got there with speed. T. Fred made a couple great plays on sacks. Tends to, to resonate in a quarterback. And, and, you know, you can set guys back on the sticks and, and take them out of their normal rhythm. And I thought our guys did a, a good job of that for, the, you know, the first three quarters or so of the game. Chuck, here. Okay. Uh, Tim, what was the uh, emotion like on the sideline early? Because you had Joey V's parents there. It seemed like it was very touching for everybody involved. Just walk us through that moment of silence and, and what it was like at the start of the game, if you could. Uh, it, it, was, it was tough emotionally, uh, but it, it was something we wanted to do if, if uh, the Via Vicencios felt good about it. And you know, I, I don't know how they, they, they did it and they held it together the, the way they did. Um, the guys, you know, Joey was such a fantastic kid, and to have a, a loss like that in your family, uh, you know, I think it was uplifting for them to be here. Uh, the fact that we won, I think, ho hopefully, you know, comfort them a little bit. But right there in the beginning of the game, for, to have them there and, and feel the love of the, of the twelfth man, you know, for them and their their the feelings that they had through their their tough times, uh, I think sp speaks volumes of our of our fans and and. Uh, was really important to them and, and to our team as well. Down in the middle. Coach, how is Coriel Judy doing uh, physically and mentally? Because, you know, just coming back off an injury and he gets, gets hurt again. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, you know I, I ache for him. Uh, we, we thought Coriel would have a tremendous senior year. Um, he, he prepared extremely well. He had two shoulder surgeries in the off season. Uh, he, that he gutted through last year, um, had a great camp. You know, we thought he was going to be a guy that was going to be a, an all-conference, potential All-American kind of guy. Um, but it wasn't in the cards for him health-wise. And to see him battle back from that and, and be able to play against Texas and then really was was 100% going to this game. And then I believe he broke something's wrist. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're paying for a kid that that works so hard and does things the right way, and you know, health-wise, it didn't you know didn't didn't work out for him. Uh, but I know him. Uh, this thing gets healthy, he'll he'll find a way to fi find it to the next level. He's a great young man. He he takes care of his business, and, and he's got a lot of talent. Okay. Got time for about three more for Coach Brett back here. Coach, uh, this season you seem like a guy who was eager to coach in the SEC and really seemed like you were looking forward to it. And you're not going to obviously get that opportunity now, but do you feel like y'all are leaving this program on solid ground uh, as y'all head out? Uh, I'd like to think so. I, th I think Coach Shor Sherman uh, really set a, uh, a base for, for this program where we've got high character young men. Uh, we've been recruiting really, really well. Uh, we've got some holes to fill with some seniors that are leaving. Um, uh, we, you know, we've got to get some better depth on defense, uh, but uh, 
yeah, I'm going to miss that, that opportunity to, to, to play in the SEC. It's a tremendous league and tremendous coaches. Um, but, but that wasn't in the cards for me either. So uh, I'm embracing the, the new challenge I have and really looking forward to it. Okay. Over here on the left, Dan. Coach, you're two years in, a, in College Station. What memory are you going to most cherish from your time with the Aggies? Probably this last one. You know, uh, to go through the adversity we went through and see our guys respond. Um, you know, the whole emotional roller coaster of, you know, what, what happened a month ago to, to losing Joey, to, to start playing in the second half where we, you know, the, the game starts swaying, to see our guys come back and finish. Uh, that, that, that sensation of getting it done uh, was huge. Uh, and, and just, uh, I can't thank our staff and our, and our players enough for, for the grit that they had to, to persevere through this. All right. Last one for Coach on the right. Coach, how, how much do you think the Fresno State people are watching you today? Uh -huh. How you handle yourself? Well, I, I hope they were Aggie fans today. Um, uh, you know, obviously we're going to be running some very similar things uh, defensively. Uh, you know, that, that, that type of style of a pressure defense. Um, but really, you know, I'm worried about them tomorrow. Today's an A&M day. Uh, and, and, and like I said, I, I, I can't thank our staff and, and our players enough and, and just so proud that we were able to do this for, for Coach Sherman and, and for Joey V and his family.